welcome back guys to Solorio Eats. So, you know, what is a Mexican do when he gets to the U.S.? Obviously, still make some pozole for Christmas. You know, you got to get a little bit of that deliciousness and your belly really hits the spot. So, welcome back, guys. Welcome back to Solorio Eats. You know, it is Christmas Eve. So, you know, everybody's getting into the festive spirit, enjoying some nice Jingle Bell songs, making some cookies for Santa to come down the chimney tomorrow. But welcome back to Solorio Eats. Uh, you know, it's been a fun ride thus far. You know, this will be our last video for the year of 2021. But, you know, it's been a great ride thus far. You know, this is video, I think, number 17. But I really appreciate everybody that's been tuning in with me every single week. So I've had a lot of fun making all these videos. You know, I've learned a lot in the process. So I have taught myself, you know, how to edit and how to shoot all this myself. You know, I've just gone to YouTube and I've been teaching myself every step of the way. So hopefully by now the videos have slightly gotten better you know since day one from the smash burgers i learned that the top down view is not as great but you know thanks again for watching every single week i appreciate each and every one of you so you know today we're gonna be getting into something that i grew up with as a kid you know something that we always make on the 24th on christmas eve you know if you grew up in a mexican household you always got together on the 24th and you celebrate into the 25th. You don't stop when the 25th strikes. You just keep going into the morning. We just keep partying all night long. But every Christmas Eve, we always make this. I'm talking about pozole. You know, if you grew up in a Mexican household, you always had it on Christmas Eve, on every big, large get together with family and friends, at you know wedding sometimes. You know, it's something that you can make in bulk and you can make a lot of and it's not super labor intensive you have to get a couple things together and let it you know kind of stew away so if you guys don't know what pozole is you know it's a rich and hearty uh stew mexican stew that's typically made with pork you know i've seen it made with chicken as well you can do green or red but today we'll be making uh, a rich pork pozole a uh, red one uh, red style but once again i appreciate each and every one of you so we're just going to get into it and I'll break down this very, very delicious pozole for you guys today. Thank you guys. So let's break down this very delicious pozole. So to any great pozole, you're going to need a nice, delicious base. You know, that sauce that really infuses the pork with a lot of flavor. So this is the start to our base. So we're going to be taking some dried Guajillo peppers. These things come with a little smoke and a little spice, but not overbearing spice. And we're also going to use dried oregano, some yellow onions, and also some fresh garlic cloves. So this is gonna start off our base. All right, so the first step into making this pozole base is taking care of our guajillo peppers. So we're gonna take our dried guajillo peppers and we're gonna take our stems off. Once we have our stems off, this is where you're gonna decide like how spicy do I want it. The more spicy you want it, the more seeds you're gonna leave in the peppers. The less spicy, well, you know, the less seeds you're gonna leave in there. But once we have our stems off, we're gonna place them into a container or a bowl, and then we're gonna cover it with enough water to cover. You know, we wanna reconstitute our peppers. We wanna bring these things back to life. And we're gonna let these things sit for a while off to the side, just really soaking in that water until they plump back up. They're gonna be more pliable, and we'll get into the next step. So now we're gonna add our garlic to this, but we wanna make sure that we take the root ends off. You know, the root ends is gonna make this bitter, so we don't want any of that. So we're gonna chop them off, and then we're gonna throw it into our sauce pot. And next, we're gonna be adding our yellow onions. We're just gonna take them, cut them in half, peel them, and chuck those bad boys right along with the garlic right into our sauce pot. So now that our wahio peppers have been soaking it up in their jacuzzi bath, we're gonna take them, and we're gonna squeeze out any of the excess water out of them now that they're plump. You can see how pliable they are. We're gonna place them right into our sauce pot along with our onion and our garlic cloves. Now that we have that all in our sauce pot, we're gonna add our oregano, our dried oregano. We're gonna hit it with three teaspoons of dried oregano. And then most obviously, most definitely, we're gonna hit it with that kosher salt. Not your granny salt, that kosher salt. And to that, we're gonna add four cups of water, just enough to cover. So now that we have everything in our sauce pot, now we're gonna place it onto our stove top. We're gonna take it and we're gonna bring it up to a boil, a nice rolling boil. Once we have it at a boil, we're gonna drop it down to a simmer. And then we're gonna let this thing simmer away for about 30 minutes until everything is nice and tender. So now that everything is nice and tender, we're gonna add everything into our blender. And we're gonna blend everything up until it's nice and silky smooth. 
You want to make sure to only add enough water to blend it. Don't add too much. You don't want to water it down. So let's get into talking about the proper protein, the proper meat that you're going to need for this very delicious pozole. So you're going to need something that's very, very fatty. You know, something that's going to be able to slow cook for several hours. Something that's not going to be, you know, too tough to eat later. You want something that's going to be super tender. So for this, we're going to be using pork butt. You can also use pork ribs. You know, that's something that's going to be very flavorful with a lot of flavor. I have this little piece of pork butt right here that I'm going to use for mine. It has a little bit of bone in. You know, that's going to add more flavor to the pozole. You know, if you're making a big batch, you know, especially at those Mexican parties, you know, like we do for Christmas, we'd be cooking a lot of stuff in there. You know, you can throw in some pork belly, some pork ribs, the pork butt, and, you know, you can throw in a couple miscellaneous items, you know, like a little bit of the ears. It's all up to you how much flavor you want to put in there and what type of cuts you want to use. So let's get into cooking our pork butt. So normally, you know, I would throw this thing into a stock pot and cook it slowly. You know, I would have time to watch it, but I will be working all day long. So we're going to be busting out our trusty, our handy crock pot. We're going to be throwing our pork butt right into there and we're going to add our pozole base to it. And then we're going to add enough water to cover. And to that, we're also going to add four to five bay leaves. You know, that's going to add another, another layer of flavor to our pozole. So now that we have our crock pot nice and stuffed and ready to go, you know, we have a great advantage using our crock pot versus a stock pot. You don't have to mess around too much with it. And then we can adjust our temp. So we're going to let our crock pot do the cooking for us, but we're going to set it on low, low temp. And obviously, you know, with the crock pot, we also have the advantage of a timer. So we're going to set this thing for 12 hours. Let it go nice and slow until I get back from work. Let it do its thing. So here we are 12 hours later and our pork butt for our pozole is super, super tender. It is falling apart after 12 hours in our handy dandy crock pot. You know, normally I would throw this into a stock pot, but you know, obviously I was at work. So normally if I did this in a stock pot, I'm going to let this roll for about four to six hours. You know, you can keep a better eye on it. Kind of like a low simmer to a medium simmer. So now that our pork is nice and tender, we're going to be adding our hominy. And if you guys don't know what hominy is, this is corn, but it goes through a special process to get it to this point. You see how plump it is. You know, if you guys want to know more about it, you can YouTube uh, the process on how it's made. But we're going to be taking our hominy and we're going to be adding it to our crock pot. You know, normally I would add this to the very end of cooking my pork on a stock pot. But here in our crock pot, we're going to crank it on high, on the high setting. And I'm going to let it go for another hour. So you want to also infuse, you know, the spices and the flavor of the pork into the hominy. You don't want to be tasting, you know, just a plain flavorless hominy. You want to get as much flavor in every step of the way. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to throw it back in our crock pot for another hour on high and let it ride out and get all those flavors in it. So let's talk about pozole's best friend. I'm talking about chili oil. These things go hand in hand with one another you cannot have any pozole without the chili oil you know you gotta slap you gotta drizzle you gotta dab your pozole in the chili oil you know that's gonna enhance your pozole all the way so you know this chili oil super easy to make we're just gonna take our dried chilies or japoneses and we're gonna shallow fry these so we're gonna take our sauce pot we're gonna place our chilies in there and then we're gonna add that's right we need that canola oil you know very high smoke point neutral oil not a lot of flavor so we're going to impart as much flavor into this oil so we're going to take our japoneses and we're going to shallow fry them you know low temp simmer and once we have these nice and toasted you make sure not to burn these you don't want these black that's going to make a very bitter chili oil so make sure not to burn these all right once we have them nice and toasted we're going to take them out using our spider and we're going to place them onto our towels to dry off any excess oil and then we're going to cool both of them separate the oil the chilies Cool them off, each in its own separate area. Once we have them both nice and cooled, we're gonna take them back and we're gonna put them back into our blender, starting with the chilies, and then you're gonna slowly add the oil. You wanna make sure that you don't add too much oil. You don't want this, you know, loose. You want it to be, you know, kind of chunky. That's gonna, you know, add a little bit of more uh, body to the pozole once we add the chili paste. If it's too much oil, it's gonna have flavor, but a lot of that flavor is gonna come with the chilies in there. And then we're gonna hit it, obviously, with that kosher salt. Not your granny salt. You wanna make sure that you're hitting this thing with that kosher salt. 
take it to that level get that granny salt out of here this is we're going into 2022 no more granny salt please get it out of here all right so our pozole is done our chili oil is done now we got to make everything or get everything that we're going to put on top of our pozole you know everything is needed you know it's either going to add another crunch element or a sour note but you know everything is most definitely needed so we're going to start off by cutting our iceberg lettuce we're just going to cut it into strips you know make sure not to cut it too thin we want to maintain some of the crunch factor and then we're also going to slice some radishes you can go as thin or as thick as you want you know this is going to add another nice little spice note from the radishes but it's also going to give us a nice pop of color some crunch and then we're going to also cut up some limes in half we're going to be squeezing these over our pozole you know it's going to give us that nice citrus note to cut through the fattiness of the pork you know and kind of balance out the the spiciness in the dish and then we're also going to be using some avocados we're going to slice them thin that's going to give us that creamy note that you get from an avocado you know it's very luscious and creamy and once again that nice color pop up against that red rich pozole that's what we're going to need and then you know to eat any pozole you need tostadas you know these are fried tortillas you can get these at the store this is my favorite brand right here you know when we're eating pozole you know the nice soft texture of that pork up against that crunchy tortilla shell is most definitely needed and you're going to need a couple of these and then we're also going to finish it with a little bit of dried oregano you know to tie everything together right at the end and we're just going to drizzle away with that potent chili oil you're gonna add as much as you want i like a lot so i'm gonna let it rain let it rain with all that chili oil So once again, guys, I had a lot of fun making this pozole for you guys today. You know, it's something that's very, very delicious. You guys can make it at your next, you know, family get together. Um, they will definitely enjoy it. But once again, you know, this will be our last video for the year in 2021. But it's been a lot of fun making all these videos every week. So these are all the videos we've done in 2021. So check them out. And thank you guys until 2022. Love you guys.